Okay, I'm doing a Tool Tip Tuesday today, and we're going to talk about resizing, um, resizing designs. And that is done in a, the in Brilliance Essential software. And I have put a couple links right here on our screen in the program, just to let you know, everything that I ever talk about in our videos here on the live can be found in our uh, more details in the manual, which you can download from our website, and that link is in blue and other videos are available on our YouTube channel. And that's the link at the bottom in green. They can also, the, any videos that are done here on, in Facebook are also found in the left column on our page. So if you go to our Facebook page, which is where how you're seeing this video, and if you then click on the video link, you'll see all of our past videos. So let's get started on how to resize a design. I have my design open in my hoop, which is the yellow border here. And the when you have the design selected, you have the dashed boxes that go around it, and you have the anchor points. When you put your mouse cursor on any one of the anchor points, you get the expansion arrow. So, and it goes in the direction of the expansion that's available using that particular anchor point. So if I want to make this design bigger, equally, I click, put my mouse cursor on a corner, click hold, drag to resize my design. When I release my mouse button, the design is resized. Now, let me undo this and let's take a look at the information that this, the software gives us on this particular design. In the lower area here, you see the number of stitches that are in the design. You also see the size of the design and inches is nice because it's familiar, but it doesn't give exact numbers. So here in the program, there's a toggle button to quickly switch between millimeters and inches. And it's really fast to see, and obvious to see, um, a changes in size when you select the design and you're working in metric, and you make the design larger. Now notice our stitches, 15,994, make it bigger, it automatically recalculated the stitches based upon the original density. Nothing else to do. If this is all you wanted to do, you can click on the center and hoop button, save your stitch file, and you're good to go. Now, when you resize, when you resize a resized design, a lot of people, or in, when I learned how to do um, machine embroidery years ago in previous software, in some software today, you still should do this. You should, they are, the mantra was, do not resize a resized design. And that's just, if you think about taking a, a photocopy of a copy of a copy, that, res, that recipe that you got from your great grandmother that's been photocopied 50 times, that's cattywampus and there's smears and it's been distorted. Well, that's what used to happen when you resized resized designs. Well, in, in, in the Essentials program, Notice when it's selected, do you see there's a percentage up here? That is the percentage, the size of this current design based upon the original. So if I take this design now and shrink it, it's now 81% of the original size. That means that this software is always resizing the original size, original design. It's not resizing a resized design. I know that sounds a little confusing, but that's how it works. <laughs> so if you think about it, this percentage, because you were in our working file, it's always going to 100%. So if I were to go in here and type 100, whoops, not 110. Here's my design, 100%. That's my original design. If I shrink it, it's, recal it's recalculating the stitches based upon that design, make it bigger, Etc. So resizing, really easy way. First way of doing it is putting your mouse cursor on top of the selection corner of the dashed box, dragging your mouse, releasing your mouse button. You notice I typed in a percentage here up in the menu bar. That's another way to resize a design. So if I knew I wanted to make it 125% um, bigger, I just knew that. All I have to do is type in 125% and it's automatically done. If you knew you needed to make it a specific size, for example, and this is where inches can come in handy, switch it back to inches, and you know that it has to be exactly three inches wide. So you can go and select your wide, because here's the wide measurement, and the one right below it is our height, 
I know it has to be only three inches wide. I type in number three, enter, and now my design is exactly three inches wide. I prefer millimeters because then I know exactly what I'm working with and what hoop I need to use. Embroidery is metric. That's, that's just the way it is. Now, if I had shown you that if you put your mouse cursor on any one of these resizing handles here, you can make your design skewed. And notice in the upper corner where the percentages were, do you see how the numbers are changing, but only in one direction? That's because I'm only resizing it in one direction. And yes, the stitches are still recalculated. They do all this mathematical stuff in there um, to recalculate the stitches based upon that stretching. And you can make it wider, narrower, etc. The lock here, this is what scales it so that if you wanted to type in numbers and only say I have it set here, let's go back to inches, it's three inches tall and four and one eighth inches, uh, I'm sorry, three inches wide, four and an eighth inches tall. If I knew I needed it three inches wide but only four inches tall, it's very specific, that's when I would hit the lock button to unlock this and then I would go in here and change my four and one eighth just to a four and it leaves the three alone. So it only changed that, but my lock is now um, unlocked. So if I do any other scaling or I shouldn't say scaling, I should say resizing, that's um, what is happening. That will, um, when it's unlocked, that means you're just gonna be able to type in any numbers that doesn't recalculate the other side proportionately. So resizing showed you grab a handle, drag, Stitches are recalculated automatically as shown in the lower right hand corner where it says stitches. Okay, Type in a number. Switch between metric and inches so that you can get the values that you need exactly. Type in a percentage using the lock and the unlock. Those are the easy ways of scaling, uh, of resizing your design so that the stitches are recalculated automatically. Now there are times when you do want your design to be enlarged, but you don't want the number of stitches to change. So look at our stitches, they're at 14,000 right here. When I grab my handle and hold down the control key on my keyboard, and I resize and release my mouse button, the number of stitches stays the same. That is called scaling in our program, in the Essentials program. Resizing generally means you make the design larger and the stitches are automatically recalculated. Scaling means that you make the design larger but you do not change the number of stitches. The advantage to doing that is if you have a very dense design and you'd like to kind of loosen it up. So you can scale it by just dragging it and making it 10% larger. That is just one of the options in the program. I have provided the link in our description that gives all of these in step-by-step -step instructions. I also wanted to show that this is available to work as far as with applique designs, not just um, spill designs. Same, it works the same process. Select your design, click hold, drag, and resize. Now, you'll want to be careful with your applique. This is just, um, you get this experience when you do machine embroidery. When you're sh shrinking or you're making a design smaller, the stitches are shorter. That's just the natural, that's how things happen. So with applique designs, you have to be rather careful because when you're also when you're making them larger, they also get wider. This particular design has, um, this, the satin stitches are not that um, exorbitant, um, wide. Some applique, for example, may have, if they had had a, a wider satin stitch here and decided to make it larger, your machine may end up put up extra needle positions in because the stitches can only be a certain length. How do you know how long your stitches are? There's a nice little measuring tool here. When you choose this option, you can put your mouse cursor changes. If you can see, it looks like a little bracket with a arrow on a Mac. I think it turns actually into a little measuring to to tape. Look at your lower left corner. Put your mouse cursor on one side of your satin and drag it to the other as if you were creating a stitch. 
and look at your stitch length. We're in inches, so that stitch length tells me absolutely nothing. So I'm going to switch back to millimeters, go back, click, hold, drag, and this tells me that my satin border is, this one is 6.6 .6 millimeters, whoops, probably about 6.3 millimeters wide. So I haven't hit that super gargantuan satin yet, but I would know that I don't want to go larger than that. Another uh, One quick thing is you when you want to work with this, let me go back to my arrow, it may be easier for you to zoom in really close so that you can now use your measuring tool and be able to click on a stitch, go right across with the stitches, look at the bottom, it says five millimeters for this red, that's the, the width of this satin. Let's go back, zoom out, so I'm gonna to go to my regular tool here, click on my heads up display and go back to my design in my hoop. Let me just fit this to my hoop really fast with one button. When you put your mouse cursor on any of the buttons in Essentials, remember that they should tell you what they do. While I have a selection made and I click on fit to hoop, it automatically resizes it to fit inside the hoop so now I have a better way of um, working with our design. So if I were to say shrink this design, let's zoom in on it, oops, actually be able to see it. Now let's use our measuring tape tool. Click hold and drag. Now, see the length of our satin stitch is only 1.7 millimeters. I did exaggerate the shrinking of this, but this is something that you need to pay attention when you are working with applique designs and resizing them. A 1.7 millimeter may not be enough to cover it, so this may not be a good choice for resizing it as extreme as we did for this one. So, that's what I have to tell you about resizing designs. And I think that's relatively easy. Please be sure to check out our downloads page to get your manual so that you can read that on, in PDF format. A lot of people like to put it on a Kindle or a Nook and look it in their Kindle app. Keep it on a, a PDF file on your desktop so you have easy access to it. Our YouTube channel is also listed here, and a link in the comments for this live video post showed you or told you exactly where the um, link to our users forum that has all sorts of tips and tricks and written instructions on how to resize your designs. Have a great day today.